Hello, everyone, and welcome to Monday's live stream. We had a lot of things to cover, so let's just jump on in. Well, actually, we always have enough time to honor those who served and never made it home. Of course, it is Memorial Day uh, here in the United States, so we'll just take a brief moment of silence as one of those who never came home. Thank you to all those who served and made the ultimate sacrifice. So today, uh, before we get into the Bitcoin, uh, the different uh, parts we're gonna talk about as far as like the million that it's reached, which is a huge milestone. I just had an interview this morning with uh, Ilya Pruskin, and who is the co-founder of Near Protocol. And we talked about how, I didn't know this actually was a thing, but Near Protocol is actually able to be on every single chain of this program that they just rolled out in March, which is called uh, the Near Signatures. Pretty interesting stuff. And then also they're rolling into AI because I didn't, I didn't realize this, but both of the co-founders, Ilya and Alex, they both uh, have a background in AI and Ilya actually worked for NVIDIA, which is the reason why the CEO of NVIDIA was so chummy with them at that latest conference. So that will be out, uh, we'll do that. We just recorded the video, that'll be out tomorrow morning. And as a reminder, Near Protocol is in the top 20, it's doing very good. They're the ones that actually built in the bear to crush it in the bull. And the video will look like this. So that'll be out tomorrow. But today what we're talking about is Bitcoin and how it's gone so well, I mean, with this ETF. Now there's an Ethereum ETF coming up. And I think it's gonna follow the same trajectory. Maybe, we will see. Remember, one of the one of the things with the Ethereum ETF is that they took out, I think, one of the biggest parts of it, which is no staking. So we'll see what the demand is for it. We'll see if institutions and people are right that institutions are clamoring for Ethereum. But for Bitcoin, as far as the ETF flows, did you know that we're at an all-time high for the AUM? Total net Bitcoin flows the ETF. Net flows, positive and negative, net flows, 236.5, almost 237. And if we take a look here, this is, I think, what's going to happen with the Ethereum. I think it's going to be the same thing with Grayscale. Uh, we can see here that in the beginning, this is BlackRock. In the beginning, BlackRock had zero Bitcoin, and Grayscale Bitcoin had over 600K. And now you can see that they are 4,000 Bitcoin difference between BlackRock overtaking Grayscale with 285,000 to 289,000, which is pretty impressive, I might add. And to give you a sense of what that looks like, it looks pretty much like this. Now they're actually excluding Grayscale for what it is, but you're gonna see that how fast BlackRock took hold and just started to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate Bitcoin as of today, we're roughly at 287,000 and growing, growing fast every single time. So we'll see how it all works out. But this is what caught my attention. This is from the bold report. And they took a look at, this is all the different ETFs. This is not just American ETFs, this is global ETFs. A funny thing, we talked about this yesterday, actually a couple of days ago, I think so, that the, the total ETFs in America is roughly 850,000 Bitcoin being held. And everywhere else was like 150, 160,000. So I know people will say, well, America's not that great and there's not that much. Trust me, we got a boatload of money and we love to print. So if you can see here that actually, this actually happened back in April or so where the uh, total accumulation is 1.45 million. Now over here, we're at 1.39 million. So we have actually gone above 1 million held by all ETFs. And I have mixed emotions. Now I'd like to get everybody's opinion. Do you think this is a good thing for Bitcoin moving forward? Because we have a lot of Bitcoin under custody and bought by institutions, but then clients for those institutions. You have to remember, it's not like BlackRock's like, give it to us all. They have clients and the clients are like saying, I want that. BlackRock says, okay, we'll buy that. They buy that and they stick it into Coinbase and that's the custody service provider. But it just seems a little bit odd as it's just held in those places. It's not under cold storage. Well, it is under cold storage as far as like with Coinbase, they do that, but it's not in the hands of the individual. So 
just want to get a feel for what everybody what everybody senses as far as this leap of a million plus Bitcoin in the hands of those ETF holders. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I think it's a, a push in the right direction. We're at the right place at the right time. And also just expect the same thing to happen for Ethereum ETFs as long as there's demand for it. And we'll see. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And then also, I want to go over this, ton blockchain. Now, just so you know, I own Bitcoin, I own ton, all right? I picked up some a little bit, like about a couple of weeks ago or so. And I know when people, it's funny, because like when I talk about uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, no one really cares, because that's fine. But as soon as I start to move down that track to like Solana or Cardano, people either love it or hate it. I think it's because either people don't have a bag or they have a bag. So let's just call a spade a spade. So I'm talking about ton because I got a bag of it. And I like to see things grow. And as, now as a reminder, ton is in the top 10 so far. But I thought this was interesting. And before I get into it, some there's, I know I can hear you yelling at the screen. And you're yelling at the screen, some of you, by saying, but Rob, you don't understand. Those wallets are centralized. It's owned by 90-some percent by a handful of individuals. It's not. And I'm going to prove it to you in a second. So ton blockchain's total value locked surpasses 300 million. So that's TVL, which is, I got to tell you, quite paltry compared to the billions on Ethereum. That's true. But I like to see progress. And Ethereum was an Ethereum at one point, and Bitcoin was a Bitcoin at another point. Just remember, this is the long game. So here's what we have. 300 million marked an over tenfold in increase since early March as far as TVL. This is why. The network, the ton network, is seeing locked value surge amid an ongoing ecosystem initiative called the Open League. And the Open League, I link this in the description. You can check this out. And I think this is a very smart way to do things. What they're trying to do is get ton coin out of their wallets to other people. And the way they're doing this is they're having you sign up just like how you do like airdrops, but they're gonna say, hey, complete some easy tax that's just tapping or logging in daily, and we'll give you some ton coin. Or if you give us some liquidity, we'll give you even more ton coin. And there's different ways to do that. That's the whole project. And there's different sections where you can see it's got as far as like, not just staking, earn with liquidity, projects, competition, DeFi grants, and here's the big one, airdrops. So I link that in the description, you can check that out. But just in a month or so, they went from pretty much nothing to over 300 million. So this is contributing to the surge in TVL by rewarding users of tons top dApps. Since the incentive program went, out, uh, went from 23 million to 350 million. Now, if you wanna verify that with on-chain data, there is also a link in the description where you can check it out on DeFi Llama. And when you go to DeFi Llama, you just click over here on the right-hand side, there's a little drop-down, and you can search for all the different cryptos that you wanna do as far as TVL, and I picked TUN. And you can just see that there was nothing going on with TUN. Whoa, that's not what I wanna do. Nothing, no TVL whatsoever. Ethereum is crushing everybody, losers. But as time has gone on flat, with that open network, look where we went. We went from 22 million to 300 million. That's over 10X. That's pretty impressive. So we'll see how it works out. I think ton could be a very big thing. I got interested into ton because of one interview. And I, I encourage you, I didn't link this in the description. I really should have, I'm sorry. But it's with the founder of TonCoin talking to Tucker Carlson. Don't groan and roll your eyes at me. It was a great interview if you hate or love Tucker Carlson. And the things that the founders and the CEO did to go against the Russian government and all governments, even America, as they encroached on just their basic freedoms of building an app is commendable. So I'd like everybody to take a listen or take a watch for that video. Now, the wallets, and this is a big thing. This is a very big thing because when I first talked about it, and I think the first time I heard about TonCoin was, uh, was me, Guy and Ben were doing a show, NFA Live. And Guy was talking, blabbering on about how great TonCoin was. And I was like, well, you know, trying to sound smart, you know, it's pretty centralized with all those wallets. And it was, it really was. But this is from Into the Block. And I linked this in the description, you can check this out. And we can see here, this is TonCoin. And if you click on over here, ownership, ownership stats. We can see that here, 11 individuals or 11 wallets 
own 31%. Now remember, everybody's laughing right now. Now remember, some of those are actually centralized exchanges, so they're not everybody. But it is something to be concerned about. And investors, which means they've got a good amount of 1 million plus, that's 119. And then retail, which is in this, I guess this would be like a yellow mustard color, that's 38%. So in all honesty, it's 38, 31, and 31, roughly. Which I gotta tell you, is not ideal, but it wasn't the 93% that it used to be. And if we take a look here for historical concentration, we can see that it was huge. It was huge. In August, it was 91%. Oh my God, it sucks. But it was hard to get it out. And I know why they did it like this. I know, I know it makes sense now because of the interview with Tucker Carlson and how they tried to, I'm gonna have you watch it, but I understand why, why they did it this way. And now they're kind of giving things away. And we can just see that over time, it has reduced from the whales to the investors to the retail. And that is a sign of the times. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, but what about Cardano? What about Bitcoin? Great question. So here's the ownership for the most decentralized crypto asset out there. Can we agree on that? I think we can agree on that. Bitcoin's pretty damn decentralized. And we can see that there's one whale with 1%. I don't know if that's Satoshi's wallet or if that's a centralized exchange, I'm not for sure. Probably Satoshi, I don't know. Number of investors, 40. 40 have almost 2 million Bitcoin. Did you know that? That's 10%. But in all honesty, it's mostly retail with 89% of the total amount of forest concentration. Yeah, Rob, what about Cardano? Great question. Cardano is pretty good. Number of whales, three whales own 9%. Good, again, could be centralized exchanges. Number of investors, 107. I bet you Charles Hoskinson's one of those. And they own 6.79 billion of ADA or 20%, but retail, still looking pretty good. Oh yeah, well, what about Avalanche? That's pretty decentralized. Yeah, for the most part, I suppose. Number of whales, 33. Number of investors, 38%. And then retail, it almost looks like TonCoin, quite honestly. You got, well, actually more, 38%, 33% of the whales and a paltry 28%. Well, what about Ethereum? Ho, ho, wait for this one. Number of whales, you got six. That's 41%. Again, centralized exchanges, perhaps. Number of investors, 52, 9.3%. You take a look at this, it's pretty good. Retail over here at 49%, whales at 41, and then investors, 12 million. What about Dogecoin? Because that's the people's coin, right, Rob? That's the first, the first meme coin of all time. Not so fast. Number of whales, nine. That's 42%. Number of investors, 76, 20%. I don't know. You're looking at this. So when people say that, hey, ton coins super centralized, you were, were right. It was. But they're making amends for that right now. That's why I own some. And we'll go from there. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.